Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Megan Tennant, in case you didn't already know. If you guys have followed this channel, you know that I covered two topics very similar to this one, but with one very, very key difference. They were mistakes that I myself had made, because I wanted you guys to know that no one's perfect. The thing is, I didn't make all of the mistakes. That would make me perfect at up, which no one's perfect at anything, so there were things that I missed in those videos which I still want to cover. So today we are covering my top 9 newbie mistakes which I personally did not make, or at least I don't think I made. I'm gonna count the list backwards of course because that's what we're doing now, so we'll start with common newbie writing mistake number 9. Adding details that don't matter. As writers, when we write our first story, it's generally something that's been in our head for years. Because most writers, when they get their first idea, they don't think, you know what, I'm gonna throw myself completely into this super stressful career path where making a living is gonna be a constant struggle and no one's gonna take me seriously until I make it. They don't do that. But that means that by the time we actually sit down and we start putting that story onto paper, it's been in our heads for a long time. Which means some scenes are more fleshed out than they need to be, and some characters have way more details tied to them than they should have. You might care a whole lot about how this character keeps running into these little dragons that are supposed to be bad omens, and you think that's this really just neat little detail and you wanted for so long to get it onto paper that of course you're gonna put it on paper. The thing is, any piece of information you include in your writing, your audience is going to assume is important in some way. Whether it be for character growth, or plot, or a key theme, or something that's foreshadowing that's gonna come back later, they're gonna take that information, they're gonna catalog it in their brain unconsciously, and it's gonna be bouncing around in there, and they're going to wait for it to become important. And then when those details don't lead anywhere, your audience is going to be very frustrated. The more you reference something in any detail, the more you build it up, and if that buildup goes to nowhere important, your audience is gonna be annoyed because they've cataloged that information, they've kept track of it, and then they ended up not even needing it because it wasn't relevant to the story. Number eight, underestimating your audience. As writers, we often have this overwhelming fear that what if the audience just doesn't get it? So to correct for this, a lot of newbie writers beat the audience over the head with the information. If you feed them too much information or too many overly clear clues or foreshadowing, they're going to start to feel like a child and they're going to start to interpret your work with a bit less respect. So make sure all of your foreshadowing is just that, a shadow. You want your audience to be thinking about your story after they walk away from it, which means there needs to be something in it for them to critically analyze. So if you lay everything out plain as day in front of them, there's nothing for them to need to think about, and therefore, when they walk away, your story won't be in their head, which means they're unlikely to come back. Trust in them to be able to come to conclusions and make assumptions on their own. Beta readers and beta viewers are your best bet here, because that's the best way to kind of know what assumptions and conclusions your target audience is drawing, and that way you can know if you need to give a little more information or a little less. Number seven, under describing. And this happens most commonly in visuals, specifically in books. And that's because sometimes these new writers tend to forget that the audience is coming in blind. You may have had these locations in your head for years and you see them plain as day, but your audience doesn't. But still in a lot of debut novels, you'll see characters arrive at a new location and we get one line or sometimes two lines describing the location, which isn't enough for us as readers to picture it which means they're just viewing the characters as sort of walking through a white space or floating heads, and that's going to completely break their immersion. They're going to realize that they're reading a book, and they're not going to be pulled into it the way you want. Number six, forgetting the other senses. I see dead people. Not that one. I mean, unless you're writing that type of story, in which case, yes, that's a sense that you're gonna have to pay attention to. But generally speaking, most writers remember sight and sound because those are kind of always present in our lives, so we think of it first. But most writers tend to forget smell, touch, and one of my all-time favorites, which even seasoned writers tend to forget, and that is temperature, and that's not a sense, but I'm just plugging it in here anyways. 
Also other environmental factors like how moist is the air? Is it super humid? Is it super dry? Pressure, are they on top of a mountain for the first time? If they are, it's gonna feel kind of light. Your audience will feel much more tied to your story if you give them information that ties to all of their senses. Plus it gives them just key details about the world. Is winter coming? That's something that could be very relevant to your story later on. So have your character get a chill every once in a while just to remind your audience that Winter is coming. Number five, forgetting injuries. You'll have a character who gets a cracked rib and then a day later within the context of the story, which is actually quite a few scenes later, that character laughs and they don't even flinch and there's no description of the pain. Any type of lasting effect on your character, injury, drunkenness, grief, write it down. Write down where it happened. If you have your entire story planned out, you can write down how long it's going to last so you know when to stop describing it. If you don't have it planned out, then just check back on the list every time you go to write more. But keep track of any sort of lasting effect. Number four, using overly fancy words for no reason besides just sounding fancy. Especially in first person narrative. If your character is a slave, trapped in a compound and they've had very little education and they're in a dog eat dog type world, they're not gonna use a word like fornicate. They're going to say F And if you're age range where you can't use the word F you're gonna have to find a more PG way to say it without using a fancy word like fornicate. And good luck to you with that. I think F is just a better overall word for that situation. Nowadays, we're pretty much exclusively writing to entertain. Yes, there's generally a message and an underlying theme, but we're writing for people's enjoyment, which means if they have to stop consuming your content to go and Google the meaning of a word, their immersion's being broken, and anytime you break your audience's immersion, you risk losing them forever, so don't do that. Plus, most of us realize that if you're using overly large synonym words, you're doing it just to sound astute, and we will judge you. Number three. No clear plot line. A very common thing in the writing of newbies is that readers end up feeling like they're rowing down a river in a boat blindfolded. They know they'll probably get to the end and that the river will take them there, but there's the annoyance and anxiety in not being able to see the path ahead. You want to give the reader twists and turns, but you also want to tease them with the knowledge that there's going to be rapids and there's going to be a waterfall. And you also want them to know kind of what general direction the river is going in and how long is the river going to be? Are they going to be on the river for the entirety of the story or are they gonna have to walk a ways? You don't want them to be completely in the dark. Tell them why they're on the river. For them to be invested, they need to know what the overall plan is. And even if that plan changes throughout the story, that's fine, but at any given point they should know kind of where they're hoping to get. Number two, trying too hard to be original. Yes, that's an issue some people hit. I've seen this so many times on Twitter. A writer posting about how excited they are about a story, and then suddenly they're posting tweets having a breakdown because they've either seen or heard of another story that has a very similar component to their own. Maybe your book happened to have a zombie-like disease that works in large part by taking away people's memories, and then you read Alethea and you thought, I'm doing that, I can't do that anymore. She's doing that, everyone will think I'm copying, it's plagiarism. But you know what? If you had that idea before reading Alethea, then there's pretty much no way your idea is gonna end up playing out the same way as mine. You could give the exact same writing prompt to 10 different writers and none of those stories are going to end up the same because every writer is different. We're all pulling on different archives of experience and we each have our own voices. So try your best to be original, but don't panic when you find something in your work that matches with someone else's especially because it's pretty much impossible to do something truly original. Unless you stole it, most people are gonna be able to tell that you didn't steal it, so it doesn't matter. There are so many stories out there in the world. Everything has been told in some way or another, especially given just the nature of storytelling itself is replicated across tons of work. I did a video kind of on the hero's journey, you can check it out, I'll link it in the description down below. But any hero's tale has very similar, if not the exact same plot beats that emerged on their own across the world, across time. Because we're all human and our brains work in a kind of similar way and that was just a pattern of storytelling that we all really enjoyed. 
So don't be afraid to have similarities between your work and other people's. And last but not least, number one common newbie mistake, self-plug or wish fulfillment characters. Little bits of ourself are gonna find their way into everything we write, but there's a difference between a character that shares a couple traits with you and a character that's a self-plug or wish fulfillment character. 736 in Aletheia has red hair. I dye my hair red because I love it, so that's kind of a wish fulfillment thing. She wears mismatched socks. Her reasoning is completely different than mine. I wear it because I think it's fun. Also, you can never lose a left pair of a sock if you don't have pairs. You just grab whatever socks you have, but that is another similarity that found its way into her. And she loves abandoned, broken down places. She loves the ruins. And she's also very curious. So little bits of me shine through in her, but she's also vastly different. And bits of me shine through in all of my characters. I'd say that my mindset actually probably most closely matches Rose. And then we have Arson, where Arson's almost in his mindset a wish fulfillment character because he's wild and does what he wants in ways that I wish I could even though he takes it a bit further than I would ever want to. And Jason likes cats. But there's also a ton of differences. Basically, take your main character, strip out everything from them that's either present in yourself or you wish was present in yourself, and look at what's left. If there's very little, if anything, left, then your main character is a self-plug or a wish fulfillment character and you need to change them up. Always make sure to give your main character, and all of your characters really, some qualities and details that you don't have and you don't ever want to have. For example, I f***ing hate birds. I think birds are dumb. I'm not a big fan of fish either, but birds and fish are pretty much on the same level of dumb for me. I like mammals, f everything else. But 736 loves birds because it makes sense for her character to like birds. So just give them components that are very clearly not you. Especially if you're the type of writer who has a social media presence. The more your audience knows you, the more it's gonna be obvious if your character is a self-plug. And that was it for the list. If any of these things stung because they're things that you've been doing, then go feel better by watching my other two videos, which were mistakes that I personally made. But even if you're doing every single one of these, remember the word common is in the title for a reason. These are mistakes that tons of writers make and it doesn't make you a bad writer. No one came straight from the uterus knowing how to write good books. And I know you can improve because by watching to the end of this video, you've just proven that you have the willingness to learn. And that's the most important step towards improvement. And even if you've already put a story out into the world with these mistakes, that's okay because there's always the next story and you can make yourself better as you progress. Now comment down below, what was your biggest newbie mistake? Was it something on this list? Was it something else? This video hits 100 likes, I'll go ahead and just throw up a part two to this. So if you wanna see more, make sure to like and share. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell, show us some love. And thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I will see you in the next video.